So today I'm upgrading a Dell Optiplex 990 small form factor desktop PC. And this thing is not too bad. We're going to install some RAM. We're going to install a solid state drive. We're going to install or keep the hard drive installed. We're going to also install a graphics card. So initially this desktop came uh with a second gen intel core i3 um i believe the integrated graphics is intel hd 2000 and other than that i believe there might be a, a 500 gigabyte uh 3.5 inch hard drive in there let's maybe open it up and take a look and I'll also go over all of the upgrades that we'll be installing today just some minor upgrades mind you uh, just stuff I have in my shop available that's compatible and also um, will act as a boost to what's currently installed so let's take a look at the inside okay in case you don't know you just have to pull up this handle and the side panel comes off really easy. Okay, here we have the optical drive. We don't really have to do anything. We don't have to really move that around unless we want to uh, maybe install something underneath it. Um, right now it just kind of acts as like a nice little shroud for all the uh, typical loose cables that come with a pre-built desktop like this. So what I'm gonna start with is taking out the hard drive so I can have better access to the SATA ports and the motherboard so we can plug in this SATA cable to um, connect to the solid state drive. Uh, an interesting thing about this desktop is that there's three SATA power connections. Uh, that's unique. I wasn't expecting that. <clears throat> Usually, uh, well, okay, I should uh, say something here. There's two that are connected to the power supply and somebody came in here and connected a, um, a SATA power splitter. So we actually have one, two, three, four SATA power connections. Uh, that's pretty rare for a small form factor desktop. Excuse me, I should say five SATA connections. There's one connected to the optical drive, of course. Uh, five SATA connections for... Let's see, uh, 200 for a small power supply like this. I mean, five SATA connections, that's quite a bit. We're not going to be using them all, of course, but anyway, let's get the hard drive out of the way so we can get the SATA cable in. You just have to pull on this blue tab here, lift up, and pull out. It's very easy. Really nice design. All right, let's stick this SATA cable into the ports right here. That's a bit of a spaghetti soup, but there's one port available right in the middle, the most uh, inaccessible spot. That's okay, we'll squeeze it in. Okay, let's get this SanDisk SSD plugged in. So just for, uh, it's a SanDisk X300S SATA 2.5 inch, 256 gigabyte SSD, SATA 2 I believe, uh, which is fine for this system. We'll put the hard drive back, actually you know what, I think I'm going to install the SSD down here on the bottom of the, uh, right underneath the hard drive. And before I do that, I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of dirt that I see here with a microfiber cloth. Just some water and microfiber cloth, that's all you really need for just a dust buildup like that. Don't really have to worry about hitting it up with like isopropyl alcohol or, or really you can use any kind of cleaner you want, but water's good enough for this. I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit. May as well hit that fan a little bit too. Okay, 
Uh, prior to working on this today, I did actually blow this this out with my air compressor, so I don't have a lot of excess dust bunnies and stuff like that. Okay, let's get this plugged in with one of the SATA connections. And I think I'm just going, I'm not really worried about cable management in a desktop like this. Uh, it just is what it is. If it was a complete like a gaming setup, if it was like a custom build with a, a tower, purchased a, and everything pieced together, I'd uh, worry about it a little bit more. But for this, I mean, you're not going to be able to see inside the case anyway. Uh, there we go. Looks good to me. So next up, let's start by... Let's follow that up, rather, by installing the RAM. And in this case, we have four gigabytes of uh, two gigabyte DDR3 uh, 1333 megahertz RAM. And I don't know if this motherboard does take... Oh, sorry, let's put that in a different slot. I don't know if this motherboard takes a higher speed of RAM. I'm sure it does. But I believe uh, this RAM is just uh, 1333 megahertz. And uh, honestly, for the purposes of this desktop, with the upgrades we're putting in, that's a fine speed. 1600 megahertz would of course be better, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. For this in particular, although I am interested if uh, this motherboard does support higher speeds. All right. Okay, we have all four RAM modules installed. Let's move on to the graphics card next. All right, I just had to rotate the case here to get a better look at the PCIe slots. What you want to do is install the graphics card in the blue one here, not the black one. Uh, this being that the blue one is the PCIe times 16 slot, that's the times 4 slot. Um, and the difference is just in speeds. So anyway, you want to lift up this little uh, piece of the blue, blue sticker on it, the tab, and we can take out this uh, low profile bracket and this low profile bracket and we'll install the one gigabyte uh, GT610 graphics card which offers a DVI, HDMI and VGA display option. Just a neat little boost for the system. Certainly not the best graphics card that you can install. Um, you know, you might be better off with like a GT710, uh, GT1030, something like that. But this is just what I have in my shop at the moment, and it is better than the integrated HD, Intel HD 2000 graphics for sure. Um, and you can always do a comparison on websites like, uh, userbenchmark.com, I believe it's called. Or just type in uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT610 versus Intel HD 2000. And that should give you an idea of what the two system or the two cards, the two graphics processing units are like when compared to each other. So anyways, enough rambling. Let's connect some, uh, let's get everything connected to the rear I.O. panel here. I may as well zoom in and show that process. All right, so natively on the board here, we have a display port and VGA option, which is always nice. Um, in case you don't have the graphics card, at least you can do dual display. We have some, audio and microphone inputs there. And there's our graphics card. So we'll plug in the VGA there. Okay. 
And further up, we actually have a, a nice option of a older style PS2 mouse and keyboard connections. I do have several of those keyboard and mice laying around, but here on my uh, workbench I do just have USB, so let's utilize two of the uh, six USB 2.0 ports on the back. And we'll also plug in the Ethernet cable, because I do plan to install Windows 10. And run all the updates necessary for the system and the upgrades. Alright. So first things first is a boot test. Let's try it out. And this will be a pretty solid indication of whether or not the graphics card works. You know, keep hitting F12 to access the boot menu. So far, so good. I'm going to scan up to the monitor here in just one second. We do have a display going on, as you can see here. So that's awesome. So I'm going to take a moment and install Windows 10 on my USB stick. And then I'll come back and we'll do a, a little overview of the updates. Oh, actually, no, nope. we're going to shut down. I completely forgot. We have one more upgrade and that is this PCIe Wi-Fi card. So let's hold down the power button, shut down, get back over here and install this Wi-Fi card. How could I forget? Okay, so we'll unplug from the power supply, of course. And we'll unplug the other peripherals so we have more room to work with here. I'm going to rotate the tower case so I can show you where I'm going to be plugging in. Okay, I'm not a professional, I should mention that again. Well, I guess for work purposes I am a prof somewhat of a professional, but anyways, let's lift that back up. And we're going to be installing the Wi-Fi card right here. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to install it over here in this bottom PCIe slot just because in the shorter one we already have um, the VGA port for the graphics card taking up the space where the Wi-Fi card would go so we're going to take up the space in the um, PCIe times 4 slot which should be totally fine so we'll thread these antennas out and try to get this installed Hold on one moment. It's a little bit awkward. Okay. It's a little bit hard to fit in. I'm going to take these antenna off. I should just show you right here. I'm going to unscrew these three antennas from the card because they're getting in the way of the install and I can't quite get this bracket in place without taking these off first. Okay, that's better. Awesome. Okay. So we'll put those antennas back on in a moment. I'll probably screw them back on while I'm installing Windows 10 actually, so uh, we'll pause the video and we'll come back once I have Windows installed and we'll do another overview of how it went. And if I 
ran into any uh, troubleshooting roadblocks. Hopefully not. All right, we're all set up. We have Windows ready to go. And just a brief overview of what we have installed. We have the 256 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. We have a uh, 500 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive for storage. We have the NVIDIA GeForce GT 610 uh, 1 gigabyte DDR3 128 bit graphics card. Um, Intel Core i3 2100 CPU at 3.10 gigahertz and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM at 1,333 megahertz. Um, and we can also see that we have a Wi-Fi connection. The PCIe Wi-Fi card is working just great. So I think this job is complete. So hopefully this helped you out. And I'd be really curious to know what you put in your Dell Opti Optiplex uh, 990? Yeah, Dell Optiplex 990. Um, I know there's some better upgrades that can go into this thing, uh, but you know what? This is a pretty sweet little option just for what I have laying around in my, in my workshop. So hopefully you learned something and hopefully at least you're gonna keep your Dell Optiplex up and running for the foreseeable future. It's just still a pretty decent little computer and yeah, let me know if you did something that you want to share or if you have any feedback or if you need any help troubleshooting. So uh, I'm either going to fade out and end the video or maybe I'll share like a little test run with some games, but I'm not too sure if I'll get a chance to before this tower goes back out to its owner. So thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day.